Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out the new Santa Cruz and Juliana bikes. Also, there's some Santa Cruz rims. Uh, there's some crazy kids carbon fiber downhill bikes from New Zealand, self-energizing brakes, and some really cool bike cave entries from you guys. Okay, so let's dive straight into news. And first up, there's some brand new stuff from the Santa Cruz guys. Uh, in particular, the new Tallboy frame. There's also the Juliana version, which is called the Juliana Joplin. Um, dare I say that is the cooler name of the two, but we'll get to that in a minute. So the Tallboy, as we know it, is their cross-country bike. Well, was their cross-country bike. It's now more focused towards the trail riders out there. Or as Santa Cruz are dubbing it, it's the downhill riders XC bike. So it's running 120 mil travel out back by their VPP system, the latest incarnation. So it's all sunk nice and low on the bike, giving you room for a water bottle cage up front, putting that shock weight nice and low. Definitely fitting into that down country category. So it's still running on 29 inch wheels. Uh, it's got a lifetime warranty. There's carbon versions and alloy versions available. And it's also got free lifetime bearing replacement on them. So if you're a European rider and you ride in muddy conditions like us here in the UK, that's gonna be a really good bike for you. Now up front it's got a 65 degree head angle. There's five sizes available in the carbon and four sizes in the alloy. So the carbon goes up to a double XL, the alloy just goes up to an XL. As far as reach on the bikes go, um, it varies a two mil difference at both ends of the spectrum because of the geometry adjustment chip in there. So you're looking at 398 and 400 on the extra small, up to 515 or 513 on the XL or the double XL, uh, depending on the settings you have them in. So plenty of room on that new bike from Santa Cruz and I think it looks really good. Um, what are you feeling about these new modern trail bikes, the sort of the 120mm category? Do you think that's enough travel for the sort of riding you guys do? Do you think you need more? Do you think you need less? Do you think this is what everyone should be on? I'd love to know what you think. I've been saying it for a while that short travel bikes in particular with 29 inch wheels, I think are the way to go because they offer the best of both worlds, the rollover of the bigger wheels, but you can still feel that terrain. Um, I hate the feeling of a bike disconnecting you too much and short travel bikes when suspension works well, they're gonna be really good. Um, also on screen now is the Juliana version of the bike. So this is the one marketed towards uh, women riders out there. It's called the Joplin. I think the name Juliana Joplin, Janice Joplin, is pretty cool what they've done there. Um, it's a really cool looking bike. Uh, this is it, a few angles on screen. It's available uh, in carbon and in alloy. Carbon from extra small to small and medium, and in the alloy, just small to medium. Um, the extra small to medium in the carbon, they're available from 398 and 400 mil reach up to 448 and 450. And in the alloy is 423 stroke 425 up to the 448 and 450. Um, two amazing looking bikes there from the Santa Cruz stables. On last week's show, we talked quite a bit about kids' bikes and how the kids' bikes and technology really has come on leaps and bounds from how it used to be. Now, someone sent us this. Now, check this out. So this is from Prevelo or Prevelo Bikes, um, the Here Kids Suspension Fork, and I quote them on this, quite possibly the best youth air fork in the universe. Um, I'll probably agree with you here. So it's available in 16, 20 and 24 inch models with 60, 80 and 80 millimeters of travel correspondingly. Um, it's got carbon, uh, carbon and alloy construction on them. Alloy steerer tube, so it's an inch and eighth steerer. Um, 30 mil stanchions, adjustable rebound, adjustable compression and lockout. Check this out for a kid's bike. Unreal bit of tech there. Uh, really nice to see that. And thanks for uh, tipping us off about that one. Uh, next up, I want to take you over to that new Specialized Enduro. So it has been out for a little while now. We've seen the Dazzle print ones floating around at various events throughout the season. And it was launched successfully last week with a very cool video. Now the bike of course takes the sort of the styling tips from the demo and it's kind of done a little bit really, dare I say, what uh, Santa Cruz have done with taking that Nomad platform um, and wheeling it out across to short, short travel bikes in a range. And of course that platform came from the V10 downhill bike. So you're seeing the same thing happen with Specialized. They've clearly realized that the need for a 29er, 170mm travel bike to just bulldoze through stuff, the way to make it feel different to the existing Stumpies and the Evos and stuff is to make it more biased towards the demo downhill platform. So this is it on the screen. Uh, looking very different from 
any specialized trail bike. Um, I almost think it looks a little discombobulated. If you think that specialized bikes on the whole have been such clean lined looking bikes, really nice looking. This is a like a rapid change uh, from what they've done previously. But at the same time, it looks really aggressive. So definitely fits the bill. So on the frame, it's a full carbon construction. It's got a threaded BB shell. So thank you Specialized for including that. For those of us that do not really favor the press fit options out there, 170 wheel travel option, front and rear. Now they've designed it to have a slightly more rearward axle pass. It's better on the big stuff. And it's got quite a high anti-squat number on there. The Specialized bowl account seem to have done their homework with this bike. The riding footage I've seen of it looks like it really hugs the ground. Um, and he specialised in it. Annoyingly, they really get things right. Uh, next up, Pock are back again with a few more cool tech things. And firstly, are their new glasses. So this is the glasses on screen, which might just look like a really cool set of riding glasses to you at a glance, but a little bit different to most. So they're called the Solar Switch. Now these are solar powered glasses and they've got electrochromic lenses. So you might have heard of photochromic lenses that tint um, when you go into darker, but these are powered by the sun, uh, hence the solar power on them, um, and they change instantly. It's an LCD lens. So the technology in these is phenomenal. So here's a few more angles of them, and they call it the Aspire Solo Switch, which introduces a world first vision with a whole new approach to optical performance, thanks to the use of an electrochromic LCD lens. Uh, the sunglasses change instantly and automatically. Uh, darker tint in sunnier conditions uh, and vice versa, but you don't have to change anything about them. It does it instantaneously. Photochromic lenses, of course, do do a similar thing, but they can take quite a lot of time. Uh, if you're diving into dark dappled woods from a bright light, for example, photochromic lens can have a bit of a delay and it can be quite confusing and straining on the eye. I'm really keen to see how these glasses work from POC. They never do things by half, so I reckon they might be onto a winner with these. Um, of course, you don't need to recharge them. There's no battery or anything. You just stick them on your face and get on with it. Pretty cool tech. And more stuff from POC is their Transit technical clothing line. Um, POC, of course, are known for their safety wear, like their knee pads, their back protectors, their helmets and stuff like that. But they also make a really fine range of technical riding clothing. They've had some of the best downhill shorts available on the market for a long time with a really tough double double layer sort of seat on the back of them. But now they've got a sort of range of technical clothing, including sort of padded insulated jackets, waterproof jackets, merino layers. And here's just some of them on screen now. Granted, these are lifestyle images. I've got no more technical details of them just yet but I am off to Eurobike in a couple of weeks. So I'm definitely gonna go and check them out because now in POC, they're gonna have a few cool things tucked up their sleeve. And one last thing from POC this week on the news, seems to be so much stuff in POC lately, is the Pocito Kids range. Now this, I'm a massive fan of because we're seeing more and more kids stuff creeping onto GMBN Tech Show. I think at some point we're gonna to have to do a kids special. Uh, we'll get to that though. But have a look at this on screen. This is their new kids helmet. And just like the adult helmets, it's fully featured. So this is the Omni Pocito Spin Helmet. Of course, it's got the spin technology, so that shearing prevention inside. Uh, it's essentially a layer of fabric that can move around, allowing the sort of um, rotation of the helmet so you don't suffer from rotational injuries, or at least it's good prevention. It's got the 360 fit system there, the EPS liner that's optimized for kids, i.e. for smaller and lighter heads, more importantly. It's completely designed around kids, so I think this is a fantastic helmet. No POC is gonna be a very good helmet too. Uh, they've also got kids specific safety wear, uh, the pads and all the safety protection. And I've got this really cool vest. It's Prima Loft, so it's insulated, but it's also high vis as well. And it's also 80% post-consumer recycled polyester fabric. So good for the environment as well. Oh, and it's back to Santa Cruz. I forgot to tell you about this one earlier on in news. They've got some new rims out. Well, actually, not necessarily a new rim, a new model within their reserve rim range. So they're made from carbon fiber. Um, they're phenomenal rims by all accounts. They've got the lifetime warranty for the original owner on them, which is probably one of the few carbon manufacturers out there offering that on a rim because the rims do take the brunt of all forces on a bike. So these ones are the Reserve 37. 37 mil wide. They're designed for the bigger tire. So this is them on screen right now. Um, so it's the 29 inch one, which is the new model. Um, they retail for 599 US dollars for a rim, but of course, don't forget you've got a lifetime warranty on that. So that is actually quite good value for money. 
Now, as far as wheels go, they're available from $15.99 upwards. Um, they're available with DT hubs and also with Industry 9 hubs. Uh, depending on what you want, you can have the SRAM XD driver, you can have the Shimano Free Hub, or you can have the Shimano Micro Spline on both DT and Industry 9 now. So they're fully featured hubs. Uh, they're laced up on Sapium CX Ray spokes. Uh, fantastic double butted spokes, those really nice high quality. Um, and that's about it. Fantastic looking rims from Santa Cruz, uh, addressing another sort of hole there. So you're able to have much bigger tires now, this time on 29 inch wheels. And next up in news, or last up in news this week, is there's a new Trek out there. And guess what? It looks like a Trek. Uh, yep, sorry guys, I had to say it, but that's no bad thing because Treks do look very good. There's a reason a lot of bikes look like Treks. It's a winning platform. So it's the new Trek Fuel EX. This is the bad boy on the screen right now. So it's a trail bike. It's got updated geometry and features on this. Quite a lot different, although at a glance, it does look quite similar to previous bikes. Again, not a bad thing by any account. So it's got 130 mil travel out back now. It's got 140 fork, adjustable geometry with the chip in there extra small through to extra large sizing. Um, interestingly, the size extra small and small are available in 27 and a half inch wheels and the small to extra large are available in 29 inch wheels. Geometry wise is 75 and 75 degrees, um, 0.5 degrees for the seat angle on there. So nice and steep for climbing and head angle is 66 and 66. 0.5, depending on which of the settings, the higher or the lower options. Uh, the reach is going to change slightly with those. So you're looking at um, 395 to 515 in low and 400 to 520 in the higher settings. So that's a nice roomy bike for the XL. Um, looks like everyone's really on board now with this, what I call proper geometry size bikes. They're nice and roomy. They're not excessively large. There's just enough reach there for the taller riders like myself out there, but it's also plenty going on for the shorter riders as well. It's just a better concept. And with the lower standover of most height bikes now, you're not restricted to buying a bike that fits you in a seat tube. You buy the bike by the length that you want. So I think that's actually a much better way of getting a bike, but you can go too long, um, which is something we're gonna answer in an ask coming up on GMBN Tech soon, because we've had a lot of people asking about bikes being too long for them, um, which is great because we've seen that question with bikes being too short for them previously. And now we're at the point where there's a lot of long bikes out there and you do need to ride them differently so perhaps we can do something over on GMBN as well with some riding techniques on longer bikes and just how you need to approach the trail. Anyway back to this trek so they're losing that full floater system we've seen this across our other models of bike full floater system enable the shock to be compressed from the bottom and the top this enables them to make the chainstay design much stronger and stiffer out back no compromise effectively on there and it uses their reactive shock technology which is a through shaft shock. It's also, interestingly, taking a tip from what Specialized have done so well for a couple of years now, they've got something very similar to Specialized SWAT storage on the down tube, uh, except theirs has got quite a cool little latch system just for uh, accessing it, I guess. Um, keen to see what you can fit in there, what sort of um, taco or baguette or anything you can fit in there, but it's pretty useful nonetheless to have that. Um, and finally with the bike, one last cool thing is it's available in Trek's custom color program called Project One, which means you can have this almost in any paint scheme you could possibly imagine. I really like what Trek do. Um, they seem to kind of just blend in the background. Uh, they're not, they don't quite shout about stuff as much, but they do seem to do very well, make really nice looking bikes. Let us know what you think of this one in the comments underneath. <laughs> All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. You know the drill, this is where you keep your bikes, where you lock them up at night, uh, nice and safe, hopefully with a ground anchor. Um, if you haven't seen that video, there's gonna be one in the video description below to install a ground anchor. Um, anyway, this is all about where you keep your bikes. Um, so send your bike caves, your workshops, your sheds, uh, your converted vans, any of them, send them into the link at the bottom of the screen right there, and we'll put you on the show. So first up this week is a dual bike cave. So this is a first. So this is from Paul in East Sussex. I'm fortunate enough to have two bike caves, one for work and one for play. I currently have a great corner of my garage set up, currently waiting for my fatty trail frame to return from its respray. And I've got a small shed for storage and charging of my many Chinese action cameras. Um, missing a few proper tools, but being an engineer, I always figure something out. This is rad, you've actually got two locations. Looking good in here, so yeah, there's your on one there. Nicely color coordinated with the helmet hanging up on the wall there, and some sort of cleaning spray as well. Um, nice little work stand on the outside and rubber floor in there. 
nice and comfortable to work on. And there we go, there's the proper workbench. Looking good there, you're sort of your, what's that, a blue toe fork? Looks like a RockShox blue toe to me. Nice setup, roll cab, storage, all the stuff you need in there. Oh, and you've got a trail dog as well. Blake would be so pleased if he was here right now. But uh, awesome, thanks for sending that one in. Whoa, flipping heck, this is a biggie. So this one's from Blix in Sweden. My bike cave in progress. A lot has been done and a lot's gonna get done in the future. All right, so you're clearly into Iron Maiden. You're clearly into baseball caps hanging up on the wall there. Some old school vans, good old checkerboards. Um, some random electric cars in there too. Um, sofa, you've got your drum kit in the corner. So what you've got hanging up there, Canyon, 20 inch as well, nice. Some ear defenders, and that suggests something good happens in there. Hopefully that's not for your guests to uh, not hear you on the drums. I, I like to think you're a good drum player, especially if you've got Iron Maiden and Machine Head banners hanging up behind you. Um, and you've got a dirt jump bike too. Whoa, look out. And you've got like a quarter pipe in there as well, proper like little mini ramp. Rad. So you've also converted that, that's a top mod and a half. Um, you've got a work stand built into the back of that mini ramp as well. That is an awesome setup. And you've got bagpipes. Ah, that explains your defenders. Oh, I get you. And you've got some skate decks too. Hey, I tell you what, Blix, that looks like an awesome setup. Okay, next up's from uh, Peter. Um, as it says where he is, just says, uh, my 2018 Santa Cruz Hightower Mango Orange um, in my room. Uh, the safest place to uh, work on my machines. Yeah, I agree with that. If you're um, if you're sleeping uh, in the same room as your bikes, not many people are going to uh, try and take those. Oh, and there's my ugly mug on the TV. But thank you for watching our show. Um, looks rad. So what's the other bike there then? Is that a canyon? Can't quite see. You've only hinted at Santa Cruz. And you're into uh, Jamie's 30 minute meals as well. Makes a nice grub, that guy. Okay, next up is from Adam. Um, in the bat cave, he says, this is my workshop, i.e. the bat cave. Totally renovated myself, rendered the walls, fitted the electrics and built all the benches. It's always a work in progress and I'm always running out of space and storage and having to build more. Yep, I know that feeling. Just finished the upgrade to my main workbench, so I thought I'd share it. I've got to say, your um, your workspace reminds me a little bit of um, Colin Furze's workshop. Um, if you don't know who he is, follow him on YouTube. He is amazing. He's an absolute nutter. He's a guy that built the Wolverine claws, the jet bike, um, pendulum swing, absolute mentalist. And he's got a crazy workshop. I'd love to go and check his space out because he's got all sorts of toys in there. Um, so what you got down the back there? So you've got a lathe in there and everything. Got magnetic tool trays up on the side there. Nice park work stand. Oh, I see into your motorbikes as well. I see your Kawasaki floor mat. Awesome. Wicked setup, mate. Nice, oh, and we're out of bike cave time. Um, please continue to take pictures of your bike caves. I've noticed on our uploader there are a lot more than usual. Um, hopefully you might have been inspired a little bit by my video of my little bike cave. Um, if you haven't, there's gonna be a link to it after this video, but please continue to tell us about your bike caves and send them in. <laughs> Now it's time for Rewind, where we take a look back at where uh, all the cool tech we have now came from and what came first. So we're pretty fortunate these days to have disc brakes on virtually all mountain bikes. Um, but back in the day, we used to have to use cantilever brakes. Now, whilst you could set cantilever brakes up to work quite well, they were never gonna be the best solution. Um, we're too limited with the conditions that we ride in and really just needed more power. Now, these, are a set of Suntour self-energizing brakes. Um, I've got to actually thank uh, John Cannings over on GCN Tech. I pinched these off his desk. I did do a little bit of filming for him, just explaining how these work though. Um, I've not seen a set of these for a very long time and these are absolutely box fresh. Now the self-energizing bit, what makes these self-energizing? Well, firstly, if you just look at a basic setup of them, a set of cantilever brakes, so they go onto the bosses on the bike, of which we don't really have anymore because you have disc brakes. You have a straddle cable and you have a cable pulling up. The straddle cable then pulls together and they basically squash onto the rim in a cantilever fashion. Now, whilst these are really as good design to brake, it took a long time to figure out the optimum, basically to get the best leverage and feel out of them. If you had the straddle quite high, they would feel quite wooden but you wouldn't have much power. If you had the straddle really low, close to the tire, you'd have more power, but it'd feel quite mushy. So there's a lot to figure out. But whilst we're all messing around doing that, Scott and Peterson, basically technology, so Scott Peterson development together, came up with self-energizing cantilevers. So hidden inside here is a helix design, basically. Uh, these are a rear brake, and 
the effect of this actually uses the rotation of the rim to give you more braking power. So as the brake pad hits the rim on the Helix itself, it actually pulls itself on even more. Basically, the harder you pull the brake, the more braking assistance you get back from the system. It's a really, really clever invention. And they've got an immensely powerful spring that when you let go of the brake to make sure that they pop back off the rim again. Now, these were fantastic on the rear of mountain bikes. They are fantastic on touring bikes and front and rear on tandems. But they won't really favor too much on the front end of mountain bikes because of the fact that they can almost unpredictable. You could find yourself going to slow down and be giving you a little bit too much power, almost grabby at times. But as far as technology goes, that is pretty cool. Um, and I've only got to say thank you to people for developing this sort of thing because uh, the sooner this got out of the system, the sooner we got disc brakes on our bikes and disc brakes these days are fantastic. Okay, now it's time for top mods. This is where you basically make little minor improvements or, or major improvements to your bikes. Um, what we're looking for here is anything that you've done to your bike that makes it a bit different or a bit better than the conventional one you buy at the shops or maybe than your friend's bikes. Whatever it is, whatever you've done to them could just be changing the tires. It could be fitting some brand new disc brakes. Anything at all counts. Let us know what you've done. Take some great pictures using your phone or your camera. Tell us all about them and the uploader service or uploader link is right there. So please send your stuff in to Top Mods on that and uh, we'll get cracking with them. So I've already noticed the first one this week. This one is something special. So this is from Tioma and location a village north of Doncaster. That's where um, Jeremy Clarkson's from. I don't have mastic tape, but work a lot with saddle respec leather. So I hand stitched a chainstay protector on with some top grade hand colored leather, which has been fully wax impregnated to repel water. Um, it would also absorb WD-40 nicely. <laughs> it looks kind of really cool. Blake would absolutely love that. He loves the sort of natural vibe. Um, as far as durability goes, it would outlast the mastic option, I think. Top grain leather is far superior to what most people's experiences with leather longevity, either genuine or bonded leathers, aka rubbish. The rhubarb coloured thread is bonded nylon, which is very tough. The more oil this absorbs, the longer it will last due to the fibre structure. That's interesting. Um, the stitching could be on could be on the wheel side, but um, I like to make it a feature, even though I cut the piece a couple of mil too short. Tell you what, that looks amazing, and I like the fact you've put those fins on there to help silence against chain slap. We're starting to see that on a lot more bikes. That new Santa Cruz uh, high tower had that earlier in the show. Uh, of course, the uh, the Joplin had that as well, and we're seeing it on many others as well. But um, I, I kind of love this. It's like a bit of an organic chainstay protector. Uh, I've got to show this to Blake. This is rad. Okay, next up's from Charlie in Victoria, Australia. I've just finished building up this Ripper bike, and I love it. Industry 9 hubs, oh, okay, right, say no more, you're spending a bit of money on this then. Uh, Industry 9 hubs, dirty components, code RSC brakes, SRAM GX stroke X01 Eagle, and RockShox squishy bits make this beast a dream to ride. Um, yeah, looks awesome, mate. And some riding shots too, nice, getting airborne. Nice work, Charlie. Oh, there's something about an all black bike. I do love bright colours, but. If I was going to pick one minor little hole in your bike, Charlie, I would say that um, your Maxxis logos don't match. You've got the OEM tyre on the back, which has got the white graphics on the sidewall, so that's one that came with the bike. And you've got the yellow one on the front. You've got to have two whites or two yellows, I think. Um, but a small tiny thing. Or you could just black them out, actually, to be honest. It would go better with the bike. Lush looking bike, though. I'm a big fan of the Kona Process bikes. Rear suspension feels amazing on those things. And they feel so solid as well. Nice upgrades on there, looking really good. Awesome, thank you for sending those top mods in. Loving what you guys are doing, keep them coming. Okay, now it's time for Tech of the Week. Now this one is Kids Focus. Again, off the back of last week's show, someone tipped us off about Meek Boys bikes. So have a look on screen right now. Gravity Focus bikes from New Zealand. They're a father and son's team. They make 20, 24 and 26 inch carbon fiber downhill bikes, especially for kids. Uh, the bikes in order of size are called the Mini Beast, the Beast and the Mega Beast. Um, they're available as frames. They also make wheels too, all from Torre T700 carbon fiber. Uh, they look absolutely bonkers. Uh, they're not cheap though. The 20 inch bikes, so that's the Mini Beast, 
$7,350. Um, I'm guessing that's New Zealand dollars on there. Um, there's a frequently asked questions uh, list on the site. Actually, I think that's a really good read. Um, there's a lot of points that I completely agree with why kids should have dedicated wheel sizes, basically instead of just sticking them on a 27 and a half inch wheel bike. Um, really well, well written stuff actually, good information on there. I think the bikes are fantastic and I think it's so cool to have stuff dedicated for little rippers out there. I know that the serious riders out there will look at these and think alright they are expensive but if you want the best for a kid these could well be the best so just a few more shots on screen but that is definitely tech of the week this week um tech of the week for tech of the future for kids of the future riding bikes rad oh well there we go there's the end of another weekly gmbn tech show hopefully you enjoyed everything on the show let us know what you think in the comments below um, especially those questions asked in news about some of those new bikes uh, for a couple more videos click down here if you want to see my bike cave and click down here if you want to know everything you need to know about looking after your bike at home that includes uh, CCTV, uh, data tags, ground anchors, locking it up, all that sort of stuff. So look after what you've got. As always, if you've got any cool suggestions for us, again, let us know in the comments or you can email us at hellotech at gmbn.com. Uh, give us a like up there, please. We love it when you do that. And of course, hit that little bell as well, which means every time you drop a new video, you'll get a little ping in your inbox. Uh, cheers, guys.